excited. Oh, Number 100 is coming uh, up. And now yeah. it finally says live on Facebook. So yeah. everyone, nice. welcome to Dive Bar Comedy. I am Wild Joe. <laughs> We're going to start our theme song. Yeah. Uh, start our watch parties. So everybody invite your friends to watch. Carol, take it away. Yes, let's take it away. Here we go with our theme song. We this is by Judy T. Share, share. Share. Take it away. Let's see if we can start a watch party. I still can't figure out how to start a watch party. Every week, I get stuck. <laughs> I could see somebody started a watch party on the Dive Bar Comedy page, it looked like. Was that you, Carol? I think so, yes. So hopefully somebody will be watching this, but uh, just can't I beat that clock. One. Minute and a half. It's too quick for me. Got to come up with two devices. You've got two devices going, right, Carol? Yes. <laughs> that's my secret. That's what I gotta do. <laughs> yeah, knows. Knows. <laughs> who else? Who else was able to start a watch party tonight? Me. Let me get mm -hmm. into my Facebook. I think Mom, so. <laughs> everybody else was successful except for me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. All right. Well, I'm Wild Joe. We've got an awesome lineup of comics again tonight. Most of these are returning guests to our dive bar comedy live streaming podcast mm -hmm. format and uh let's just go around and say hi i already said hi to carol newell who is streaming us live from vacation <laughs> carol, you're on vacation right what yep. <clears throat> and so she looks I'm in like she's in Nevada. a bar <laughs> oh. <laughs> where are you <laughs> laughlin nevada laughlin nevada uh, hot then, all day and all the time. <laughs> uh -huh. What else? We've got Mr. C dressed up as Minnie Mouse today. What up, Mr. C? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Minnie Mouse, Del Negro in the spot. You know what I mean? Representing <laughs> our comedy show. Always getting buck wild to the style and always glad to be here and excited to hear the really good comedians we're about to have thrown out. Wow. All right. Who else? Okay. Let's just call out the names. Everybody just say hi. Suwan what's up? Deanna. Hey, what's up? It's great to be here. Thanks for having me back. Doug, welcome Doug. back. Yes, Everybody's one. a repeat guest, I think. Aaron, Michael, Marsh. <laughs> what's up? So I think it's my third or fourth time on your show. Thank you for having it's me back. It's stop. Yeah. I know. I love it. Yeah, I try to space people out at least a month to six weeks, but We've been doing this a few months now already, so I know cool. going strong. 
we'll go back around all our favorite people. Bear Bado, what's oh, up? What's up? Good to Your see hair you is looking better every time. <laughs> it's getting crazy. It's, it's a COVID mullet. That's what happens, dude. <laughs> I love it. My mullet has caught COVID and it's gone nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I got um, Pete, uh, Pete de Alessandro. It's true. <laughs> I'm back. Back again. <laughs> Everybody's back again. Okay, you We're guys. Back. I, I sent out a warning. Uh, don't do the same set as last time. I know people aren't out there working their new material, but try not to do all the same jokes because maybe we have some repeat viewers and they don't want to hear the same set mm -hmm. every time, but I'm happy to have you all back again. Who's left? Deanna Dixon. Hi. Yeah. I'm always You're left. drinking in your bar. <laughs> what are you drinking? Oh, um, water with tequila. <laughs> no, just water. <laughs> <laughs> trying just to water. make your water sound exciting <laughs> <laughs> all right it can all right. be so what have we missed out on since the last time we had you on suan what have you been up to oh fun stuff look i'm doing dive bar comedy and i'm sober Ooh. Ooh. Oh, nice yeah. Yeah, wow. I got, is this a new days. is this a new thing being sober or, or that yeah yeah like because who didn't want yeah. to be sober me that's that's one of those things that's rare that's yeah, I had to do wow it. it was it was time during well, COVID. how do you think that's gonna affect your comedy i can only imagine well hopefully it'll be better uh you know who knows i don't know sober nice. comedy i don't know well it might improve your memory it might improve your memory <laughs> That's what they so, say. We can make things say. fuzzy. <laughs> be a, little, a little fuzzy with the weed, right? I don't know. Just yeah, saying. I uh, believe it makes you I smarter. I smoking weed, wears. but uh, yeah, may, oh, I, I'll tell you. If I one time I went on a cruise, and I was so impressed by all the the dancers, the the people in all the productions that they had, that I went online and I found that they were doing auditions in LA like the next day or something. So I went to like audition to be like a dancer on Carnival Cruise and I hadn't taken ballet. I mean, I finished when I was 18 or something. And I was like 38 when I decided to do this. It was all wow. these professionals. I was stoned and trying to like remember like the moves. If any of you have ever tried to memorize choreography, it is tough it's hard. in any state, but try being stoned. I basically, I made a fool out of myself, but uh, it's one of those experiences. Uh, I was I was the only person there that that I know, so nobody was there to share it with me. But uh, mm. I remember what an idiot I was trying to dance with these like professional dancers when I hadn't been dancing <laughs> in twenty years. But, Especially uh, when they're pros. Gotta oh live life. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Aaron Michael Marsh. How you doing? I love the three part name. What's Thank been you. going on with you? I mean, nothing. I'm still in quarantine. I'm still in my apartment. Fourth of July happened and that was exciting and fun. But did like, you I look outside anything. the window? Did you see any fireworks? <laughs> yeah, I did. And then I went outside and I even looked up. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, I invited my roommate to come and he was just like, but where are you gonna see them? And I was like, outside, in the sky, everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> and like yeah. he just like I'm surrounded by buildings, so I heard a lot of action, but I didn't bother to go outside. I couldn't see anything. Oh, from my window, I can see downtown. I'm not super close to downtown, but I can see it. And so it was going strong for like three or four hours. Oh, I could definitely hear it. It sounded like uh, some kind of bomb bombing was going on in LA. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty <laughs> awesome. Neighbor... Was like... I'm sure I saw videos the next day. Oh yeah, it was the happiest bombing I've ever seen. <laughs> Carol? Oh, I was going to say, my neighbors put on the best show. I just sit in the front yard and watch it from my front yard because they have like, like the full on, like professional looking <laughs> fireworks that go for hours. So, yeah, I, it, it's it's the best at my house. <laughs> I mean, I think these are illegal, right? I, it's illegal to yeah, set off illegal. fireworks yeah. in the yeah. street, but yeah. I mean, everybody was doing it mm -hmm. I, and i don't even know i heard these fireworks all come from mexico i don't even know where people all were able to buy them you just Every year them, them, right? get them. 
the guy in my neighborhood, he's a salesman. So uh, normally when there's not a revolution going on with all the other crazy <laughs> stuff, typically right before, about a month before July 4th, every hour on the hour from about 9 o'clock to 12, he sets off one a rocket. So hmm. 9, 10, 11, 12. And that's to let everybody in the neighborhood know, like, before July 4th comes, you know, come over here to get this shit because I took the drop to Mexico. In Philly, uh, they drive to South Carolina. Uh, to pick them up and bring it back to South Carolina. I think every state has, because, you know, states' rights, baby. Woo! That's why I'm mm -hmm. the president. States' <laughs> rights. You know what I'm saying? You could drive over a couple of states, get a new life, have three families. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you get fireworks. That's the best part. So it's <laughs> America. <laughs> wow. All right. Pete to Alessandro. I love your name. It's very sexy. Thank you. I also went with a three part name, just a letter in the middle. <laughs> He's I think you're missing an apostrophe. <laughs> that, uh, that apostrophe complicates life in every possible aspect. So, is uh, the apostrophe, uh, yeah, how does the apostrophe work when you have to fill out forms and, and that kind of thing? Is that an official? letter that's allowed in a name uh it's an official letter sometimes it's allowed <laughs> and sometimes it's not and uh, you find that out when you can't get into wherever it is you're going half the time um wow. definitely been kicked out of a lot one time crashed a multi-million dollar application by logging into it um <laughs> so you gotta watch that's out for your that's the moral of the story don't put stupid characters in your name and be careful what you name your kids because that shit's not always gonna work a two your last name i mean you don't have that much control over the last name you do you just you just gotta suck it up and go to the court and change your name legally which i haven't done <laughs> well on zoom it appears because i see deanna has an apostrophe in her name deanna's <laughs> iphone so you could have put the apostrophe it looks like you were just kind of lazy typing it in that's quite possible <laughs> I, I won't lie, but I also don't know what's going to happen. I'm kind of lazy a lot of times. <laughs> is it going to work or it's like Pete, the one guy whose iPad explodes. So I just went without the apostrophe for safety. All right. All right. Yeah, you're feeling safe. So have you been staying home or have you been out uh, partying? Yes, we're we're completely home and have not left except to go to Trader Joe's uh, about eight times. <laughs> Trader pandemic. So uh, not much here. Wow. We're trying to play it hardcore. Yeah, that's good. I went, uh, my birthday passed, uh, like, uh, oh, no. to, I went to a restaurant, an outdoor restaurant, and with one friend, because I only could get one person to agree to go with me, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and we had a table off, far away from everybody else, and, and I risked my life by taking off my mask and eating in front of my friend, <laughs> right. but, uh, I'm okay, it's been two weeks. How's your friend doing that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. we're both fine. Yeah, okay. I think we're both Good fine. Good for you. So, yeah. but it was it was nice, but but it's not something you want to do all the time because you feel nervous just going anywhere nowadays. Mm -hmm. So uh, my birthday, I I stayed right here. It was the worst birthday you could you really you know as low key as it gets. Yeah, so, yeah. I thought having babies was uh, bad for my birthday some, uh, parties. What? Mr. I was going to say, I, when I was some rich people, rich people, yo, the fucking building is packed, yo. I'm out at this, this high-end restaurant last weekend with my homie and his daughter to show off for it. And we went there. Shit was mad expensive. And yo, packed house. And when I actually had to reserve a table, we used this table app called like Lion In or something like that where you can reserve a table. And like any kind of restaurant from cheap to dope. And the rich people, they're out getting it. So uh, I figured they know the secret. So it's probably like a, a government mission. No, no, I don't. I think normally rich people feel kind of immune to disease and that kind of thing. But I mean, look, the, the what was the prime minister of, of the UK got it. Now I heard the president of Brazil today got it. Uh -huh. So, I mean, people at the top of the top are all catching it. So nobody's nobody's immune. Doesn't matter how much money you have. Well, well, think about that in perspective. Those are political figures and famous people. They shake a lot of hands. Almost everybody they fuck with is from another country. There's people hopping on or off of planes. <laughs> the NBA players. That Rudy Gobert is half French. You tell me half the people he don't fuck with are not from uh, Europe? Get out of here. That shit, uh, uh, man, uh, uh, I'll tell you. But trust me, Tyrone in the hood, he's not passing that shit around because he ain't been off the block in a year. So that's all. What about you, Deanna Dixon? Airport, you know? hey, how's your, how's your quarantine going? <laughs> well, you know, 
I still have to go to work part time, but I'm glad. I mean, otherwise I would go to, I'd be cra going crazier than I already am. <laughs> I mean, that's my husband's um, and my date night. We go to work. <laughs> Wait, are you doing like massage therapy or something like that? Or yeah, I do chiropractic and massage. I I was the mm -hmm. only that's risky right now. You're so close time. to people. I know. You're touching them. You're touching I their know. bodies. Like I just pray. Yeah, I just pray every day. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, I just use day. a lot of hand cleanser and <laughs> they, <laughs> I just take their temperature, make sure they're okay, and off off we go. <laughs> off wow. their clothes go. I joined um <laughs> some COVID survivor pages on Facebook just to see the stories. And uh, I asked people, do you guys have a fever? Because we were thinking about doing a live show in real life and taking people's temperature. I said, did oh, all wow, of you get yeah. a fever? And like a third of people said they never got a fever. They just uh, had other symptoms. So oh, really? even the fever thing is not 100%. I heard, just, yeah, yeah, that's FYI. a weird thing. Like everywhere you go, you're supposed to get your temperature taken, but you still can be sick and you don't have a temperature. Yeah. So it's better than nothing, but it's not a hundred percent. All right, yeah. we're all we're all praying for you that, that you don't <laughs> thank you have to rub on one of these people and uh, yep. <laughs> rub the wrong way. I heard that uh, anybody uh, comes comes in, though, right. too scared. I heard that D.L. Hughley didn't have any symptoms; he just collapsed on stage. Right. Yeah. And he was oh. dehydrated. He was dehydrated too, though, right? Like that was part of it. Yeah. Well, he, yeah. he has diabetes and he was dehydrated. You can even look at the Vlad interview a couple of weeks before that. He looks, his face is all sunken in. He was dried up and mm. he even worked hard because his money is tied from comedy. So even doing double hard, he said he's lost millions and whatnot. Mm. So it sounds like he was grinding his ass off so goddamn hard. He didn't give a fuck and he pushed himself. And then having COVID, just like the thing with the guy with the knee, it was another factor that made it worse. You know and he what I didn't mean? know he had COVID, right? Well, it doesn't matter. Right. I mean, but, but if you're tired and you got diabetes and you're dehydrated and you got COVID, you're liable to fall the fuck out. You feel, feel <laughs> what I'm saying? But let's say if he didn't have COVID, he might not have passed out. He might have just felt like shit that night. You get what I'm saying? So right, the COVID yeah. is the thing that takes you, took him down. It was but due to pass He would have been probably felt like shit, shit the next day, you know? Wow. Yeah, what a way pass. to pass out right there on stage during your set. Right? Oh, it weird. wasn't like while he was waiting to go up or it was during his set. That's, that's I crazy. think that scared the community quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, it should. Yeah, I love them. should wow. scare everybody. Yeah. yeah. All right. Right. It should Who definitely else is in the house? Definitely. Bear Bado. I saved you for last, but Bear, you want to go up first on, on the stand-up, right? Yeah, I'm totally down to go up first. Uh, okay. Got craziness going on, so I wouldn't mind it. All right. Yeah. How uh, how you been doing? You've been been good. Working, you know, doing anything uh, during this uh, time? Yeah, we uh so, <laughs> during the small gap, I guess that was uh life opening up because it looks like it closed again i did get lucky enough to film uh which was really fun and uh i do have a movie that came out today so awesome. it's, uh, ah, it's called, the movie? called uh browse starring lucas haas uh nice. it's like a psychological thriller and cool. uh i play a drug dealing rich kid so, uh, right. so, so you're playing yourself you you. show, right? <laughs> i'm doing good health wise though you know uh you know mr c did give me covid but uh that's the name of his new heroin that's mm. right that's that good shit that's <laughs> that good shit. <laughs> wow that's cool it's like you All know right. hollywood typecast that's what they say <laughs> all right but thank all you right so i think uh fun. those are all of our lovely guests all regulars on our live shows regulars on our virtual show and i can't wait to hear your sets tonight so Woo. mr c me and carol are gonna skip out because we can't okay. think of any new jokes okay. we, we did it all <laughs> we, we shot our what's it called shoot your load 
blow your wad. Yeah. Blow your load. <laughs> blow your load. <laughs> <laughs> blow your load. <laughs> shoot your wad. <laughs> On vacation. Exactly. You don't want to <laughs> blow your load, though. You shoot your load. <laughs> Last one get like stuck on it, you know, like blow it and get everywhere. Woo! <laughs> uh, yeah. So we got the right, so so five to go first. Yes. Okay. So I'll turn it over to you and uh you can figure out the lineup from there. Okay. All right, cool. All right, good. Yeah. Well, one round of applause for Wild Joe and the start of the oh, show, everybody. Woo <laughs> hoo, Joe. Oh, so like we got what, five comedians we're working on? Three boys, two girls. So it's going to be a really exciting thing. I think Epstein would love this scene. So we're going to really have a great time. <laughs> Actually, everybody's too old. I'm sorry. Well, hey, I'll be we love Epstein 30 you. years ago with all of this. Let's leave it at that. Um, so <laughs> we're about to get into the game. We're going to start with our first comedian in a little bit. Also, just a hood tip. Uh, we used to call uh, dropping a load busting a gummy because it gets like real sticky. <laughs> but anyway, let's leave it at that. So you guys ready for this first comedian coming to the stage? Yeah. All right. Party wise, we about to jump it off. I'm Mr. City Enforcer. This is the Dive Bar Comedy Show. We got our first comedian. He's a bad, bad man. I've been playing Red Dead Redemption, and I look just for things that got this man's first name because they're fuzzy, cute, but yet extremely dangerous. So you better get ready and give me a clap, 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 clap for Bear the Bad Man, but oh, yeah, little Bear. What's up, guys? You're right, Mr. C. Dude, I have been playing Red Dead Redemption 2. Freaking mm. COVID, bro. I look like a guy on that game you'd run into in, like, the whorehouse. Like, <laughs> I feel like they just took me in different versions of myself and turned it into the video game characters. <laughs> it's a really awesome game. For those of you who don't know, get out there and do that shit. I'm telling you. Um, yeah, let's get into it, guys. Life has been crazy. COVID's been hitting, uh, but the fucking doctors have opened up. Been going to doctors oh. like crazy, guys. I, I hate to say it. Uh, doctor put me on Wellbutrin, which is, <laughs> uh, if you guys don't know what Wellbutrin is, it's a mute mood stabilizer for people that are unstable, uh, so to speak. And uh, this is what he told me about Wellbutrin. It's going to make me not want to drink anymore, not want to smoke anymore, and not want to have sex anymore. <laughs> what the hell kind of medication is that? <laughs> Wellbutrin. Side effects include becoming Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be the only weird guy who takes a medication so that he's waiting at the door for Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> Just come on in, guys. Come on in. Let's be friends. I, I just, I really, I, I really, I hate doctors. Here's the thing, too. My wife is sick. So we go to doctors so much that doctors have become our friends. <laughs> our friends, guys. <laughs> like, for real. Have you ever discussed a colonoscopy over dinner? <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not a pleasant experience. And you think it's cool if your doctor invites you to smoke weed and hang out on Halloween. That's some awkward <laughs> shit, guys. <laughs> Imagine your doctor right now, man or woman, picture him in your head. Now take the lab coat off. And what do you got? A guy who's on the street begging for change. <laughs> when I walked into this house, it looked like a bunch of old dudes dressed as raisinettes, like the background from a shitty Raisin Bran commercial. <laughs> they were playing music together, smoking weed. This is the same guy who cuts you open with a fucking spatula thing. <laughs> It's ridiculous, guys. And here's the thing that I noticed. They always tend to ask you, hey, uh, can you tell me what's wrong with you today? I'm here <laughs> paying you to tell me what's wrong with me. It's, it's absurd. And a common thing they always ask is, hey, hey, uh, can your wife remember the steps of her day and write down 
Like the things that happen. She's got memory loss, guys. My <laughs> wife has memory loss. <laughs> she can't remember that we're in the doctor's office. <laughs> she barely remembers she's remembered to me. If she did, you think she'd let me have this haircut? <laughs> 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 I mean, it's, it's crazy. And here's the thing. Every time I go to the doctor, I start to realize that, that these doctors aren't learning shit. Technology is expanding, but they're not learning anything because they're all older and ready for retirement, which screws us, guys. It screws us because there's a new thing that comes out every single week that tells the doctors what is new that particular week, right? But they don't check that shit. So I have to be the one who Googles it and goes and looks up online what the hell is happening there. <laughs> I'm finding YouTube videos of doctors like I would how to change a carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally a doctor's page on there with a guy that will tell you online how to stay up to date with doctor information. He's on there just like, Hey guys, welcome to our page. We're going to discuss how to remove a heart today. Uh, <laughs> make sure you hit the subscribe button because next yeah. week we're going to discuss colonoscopies. <laughs> <laughs> we're speaking of, guys, we have to get that every year. I don't know about you ladies, but guys, they know now how to create cells that are electronic that can reproduce white blood cells and red blood cells. Why is it that we still have two fingers go up our asshole? <laughs> <laughs> For real, there's not even a device, not a laser or anything that's up. That's what it is. Not even a dildo, guys. <laughs> there's not even a dildo that they could stick up there that would monitor whether or not you have cancer. No, there's a guy who's got to do a little bit of this come through a little bit of funny finger action in there doesn't even whisper sweet nothings to you i mean ladies you guys you'll have a device at least you know you've got a thing that goes in if you get the boobs done they take two clamps and they they, they clamp them over the boob you know we don't get that we get a grip of the ball sack dude There's a mm -hmm. guys probably got covid from doctors grabbing their nuts <laughs> I mean, it's it's honestly most one of the most ridiculous things in the world. I'm not look. I'm not gay. I'm just saying I wouldn't mind a dildo <laughs> every now and then instead of a finger. All right. <laughs> I, I heard a uh, like uh, yeah. That's the noise you make when you go to the gynecologist, guys. <laughs> look, ah. Uh, I had an experience the other day. I'm going to tell you guys about this. Uh, COVID brought this on. You guys ever hear about DMT? Mm -hmm. you know what? Her white guy's like, yep, know what that is. That's a guy who's done DMT right there. <laughs> <laughs> DMT is like acid or shrooms times a million. Okay. <laughs> Supposedly, you see all these things. It's supposed to be spiritual, and you take this hit, right? I take this hit from a pipe. You suck it in, you blow it out. You suck it in, you blow it out. By the time the third hit is, you fucking rocket ship into space, and it's like you come out of your body, and you're in this other world, dude, where supposedly these beings come in, and they 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 look like these, like, little bitty like trippy kaleidoscope beings and they talk to you give you the meaning of life tell you what you need to hear and i i these amazing beings guys I, and they told me uh that a, a colonoscopy should involve a dildo <laughs> <laughs> so it was very spiritual it turns out i'm on the right path um, I just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, I love you guys. I'm going to let that be my time for tonight. I'm Bear Beto. Uh, check out my movie. It's Browse on, uh, it's on Amazon. It's on Google Play. It's on iTunes. Uh, rock it on, guys. Woo! Yeah. Right. Hey. 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 Hey.
about those. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. And that's why I check out his movie Browls and what now with Bear by Doe doing what he looks like, selling drugs and getting arrested. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call acting. Oh, he's like my new Keanu Reeves. I want to be just like Bear as an actor. I just want to play the same role every movie and get rich. It's like, <laughs> hey, mm -hmm. yeah, One day I'm going to play myself. It's the key. My friends told <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, dude. I did the skip bags thing. And uh, one of my friends actually, um, sometimes he gets uh, into trouble because he's a Hollywood guy. And every time he's going through um, that special vacation, they go to Colorado <laughs> and they do DMT. And he's like, yo, wow. man. Had, and he's just like, totally cool. Now, it only lasts about six months. <laughs> but, six months. <laughs> it lasts every six, six months. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, well, all right, I guess you're going back to Colorado, huh? Let me buy you some DMT. Shit. All right. It's, it's one of those yeah. drugs you do, and then you go, I don't know about this. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But it's a great experience, and it's good to get into the spiritual. Uh, those kaleidoscope people are most likely what they call light bodies, and that's just simply us being multidimensional and transferring spirits from uh, all the different levels. So yeah, that was just you probably talking to yourself. That's all that <laughs> is. And when not. That's so funny. we got our next comedian coming to the stage. Oh, I, I, forgot, I forgot one thing. Yes. We got a, a paying fan this week. I'm Anybody sure. friends with KJ Johnson? KJ yeah. Johnson. Bought yeah. a ticket on Eventbrite to watch this show. So I want to say you, thanks to our paying and fans. You can, we appreciate it. And uh, yeah, keep it coming. We we love paying fans because we don't get to do our live shows anymore. So this is our this is our opportunity to perform. So thanks for supporting the arts. Yeah. All right. And uh, oh, remember, if you have to cut out early. We huh? are so happy that you were able to come, or you can hang out as long as you want. We'll probably be here until 10 o'clock or so. So Yeah. That's right. right. Big we'll see. Oh, yeah. You. Another shout out to KJ Johnson. That's what I'm talking about. All He's right. Like basketball player like Kevin Johnson. I wonder if he can dunk on a seven foot black man. It's <laughs> <laughs> like Kevin Johnson, man. You know, he's a mayor now. Do you imagine your mayor dunking really? on you? You feel like shit. Yeah, he's uh, the mayor of Sacramento. He used to play for the Phoenix Suns, and then he went I to Sacramento, and now he's the mayor of Sacramento. And he's like a six foot one guy, and he would like dunk on Akeem Olajuwon mm -hmm. like he was a baby. It was beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. So once again, Bear Bidell and KJ, the bad man, Kevin got pin for us, Johnson. Let's get to our next <laughs> So next up for the game, we got a wonderful lady. She is a savvy veteran of the Dive Bar Comedy Show. So she may have COVID. I don't know. <laughs> oh, she definitely ah. is sober. And she's going to give you every last bit of her brilliance because she is fresh. She is clean. She is smooth. And she is interline like her last name. And that's why you better never get sued by Miss Suwan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So, you know, it's so great. Like, you know, I just got sober, right? And I have this dive bar yeah. comedy virtual background. So I go to a virtual AA meeting and I've got <laughs> this bar. <laughs> my I was like, oh, shit. I felt so bad. You know, like maybe like they just thought I was trolling them, you know, and they're just like they I, I sat there for a second and I was like, I, I got to go. Like, it just, I was too new. <laughs> I couldn't own it yet. You know what I mean? It was, I was too, I was too soon. And um, Bear, I mean, well, Bear's gone now, but like he's talking about like chicks don't like, go through stuff. Are you kidding me? Like we got metal stirrups that we got to stick inside the stirrups isn't the right word, but you know what I mean? Like, like what are you talking about? It's so like, we have to go through so much rough crap and getting our boobs smashed in the mammogram machine. It's horrible. Yeah. Um, Bear. Anyway, that's what he, <laughs> you know what, with a name like Bear, that's what he gets. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, no, he was awesome. He was awesome. Um, I, I live with my mom now because um, I'm cheap. No, I mean, I'm Asian. <laughs> I'm a good Asian daughter, so I live here, and um, she, she does think that being cheap is so, it's a positive gift, and it affirms her genius. <laughs> this is this is my mom you guys like so um 
she's just so proud of her deals. And I was looking for a new bed for myself. And we go to the mattress store. I'm trying out the, the mattress man was so nice. Like we showed us all these levels from like firm to like squish. It was so good. <laughs> And, um, you know, so my mom's like, I will deal. So fine. Perfect. And um, so we, we go back after a couple of days and I tell my mom, he was nice. You know, he was so like generous, all this stuff. So she's talking to him after begging and pleading for a deal. No shame. She says, my daughter likes you. And I was <laughs> like, hmm what like that i mean i didn't say i want to have sex with this dude like this middle-aged mattress man like <laughs> you know but we did save three hundred dollars wow mm. <laughs> that's a lot of money man the bad news <laughs> good is, for you right i know my mom it's true she's a genius but i do have to cancel a date for saturday night mm. what? yeah yeah no. Like, I wasn't going to fuck for guy. Come on. Not only that. <laughs> I mean, I'm a lesbian. So either way, we're not fine. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for me. Um, yeah. Look, she's 88 years old. She could barely hear. You know, I can cuss her out just like I did when I was five. I'm like back to that again. You know, it's just like I'm a little kid all over. And a um, little Korean lady. She, I mean, she will ask for a deal at Macy's, you guys. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing as fuck. Um, I love being a lesbian. It's so like, it was such like, yes. And I did come to it. Like I finally came to it. I was on a, um, I was on a mushroom journey. So it took me, like, I had been in and out of the closet like 19 times. Like, you know, I fucked you guys. <laughs> Right, like I, I whatever, <laughs> we, you know, fine. <laughs> but um, I just had to figure it out, you know. I had to go like that. I don't all that. I don't want it, you know. That's, that was just not my jam. So I, you know, I came out of the closet on a mushroom journey. Finally, it's like I finally got it. I was like. Oh, thank God. And then I had to call, I had to call my ex-girlfriend. I had to call my old girlfriend too. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm so sorry I put you through. Like, uh, I had no idea. Anyways, what am I saying? I don't know. Um, you guys, you know what? I think there should be lesbian gang signs, right? Like something, really? yes, thank you. Yeah, exactly. You know, like something for when we see each other, there's acknowledgement. There is, right? it's like, there is. like like not like what are we gonna do we're just walking by like so I was hiking and um well this is pre-covid of course I'm hiking and <laughs> seeing these older lesbians come up a hill and so we just you know we look at each other we nod <laughs> hello hello <laughs> but like if you were gay dudes if you I mean you, if you were drag queens and like a whole group you would just be like, oh girl, work, right? It would be, it would be fun. Hello. <laughs> oh my God. So like, I feel like there should at least be like, uh, like something that's acknowledgement. All right, fine. You guys are not lesbians, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, Carol, Carol messes around. I know she does. <laughs> no, I don't know. What am I saying? I'm just, I'm just knowing things, right? Uh, yes, what do yes. I know? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Yay. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys, um, what should we talk about this thing with COVID? Did you, have you all taken your COVID tests yet? Not I took yet. one online. Not yet. Yes. Not yet. I took a COVID test online. Online? Right. <laughs> right. It's weird. That work? I know. It turns out I'm at very high risk of getting COVID based on my age, all that kind of good stuff. Um, I really don't have a punchline to it. It's just sad. <laughs> it's just sad. <laughs> you know, you you know you're getting older when you have friends that are born the same year you graduated from high school. And yeah. you know what? When I was 18, I was super ageist. And there is no way. I would have been friends with a baby. 
<laughs> I love Carol's laugh. It's so fun. <laughs> um, you know what? I think we're just going to end it on that. We'll give it back to the room. Thank you all so much. Thanks for having me. Dive bar. Right. We're we for baby. Thank you, yeah. darling. There's that's what? right. That's right. That's right. The Korean is... lady killer. Y'all don't know nothing what? about it. You better know. You better know. I like her idea about the symbol thing too and whatnot. Like maybe they could do like a like a little hand symbol, like it's a rainbow flag or something. There's one. Like just, there's one like already. You, you what? just walk there's one. Like, Carol knows. There's one. It's this one. Oh, I know Carol. Because <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. you got the young ones too. That's Who is what it, Carol? I do. <laughs> No, Thank back you, in the 80s and 90s, the, the guys would have like one ear pierced meant you're gay, yeah. and the other ear meant you were straight. Like there was a <laughs> symbol. But, uh, I did yeah, hear that. There's got to be something like that. I think it was, I forgot it was left ear meant you're gay. And there was a bandana thing in your back pocket too, but I don't know which. Was it a green, a green really? handkerchief in your back pocket or something means you're a lesbian? <laughs> No, I don't know about lesbian. Wasn't there a thumb ring at one point? Wasn't that part of it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just like walk around day. hiking and doing that. Uh, <laughs> like like that. Everywhere you go. <laughs> Here I am. Hey, I mean, it's the universal symbol. <laughs> it is the universal symbol. And I mean, me personally, as a lesbian who is obsessed with men and I hate dick, I'm also a total lesbian, so mm -hmm. I support the symbol. <laughs> and as president, I'm gonna push that for the LGBT community because that's what I'm here for. Fine. All, All right. right. Uh, All right. right. Yeah. Round of applause for Suwan Weaver, everybody. Yay! All right, Suwan. All righty, right, right, right. Love you. Now we're about to give one of those things that all of us lesbians can't stand to have stuck inside of us. Oh, man. So let's get ready for him because he's going to kill the fucking stage. I like his thing because I had an old teacher, had a name just like him. I wanted to uh, be lesbian with her, too, shall we say. And she had a great last name. Let's hope this is not his relative and he'll punch me in the face when he sees me live. You better get ready and give me a clap, 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 clap for Pete. He ain't never off beat. Delisandro! All right. Thank you. Mr. C's intros are always the best. Uh, that is a relative of mine. Uh, she was pretty horny, so it was all right. You did, you did the right thing. She would have been angry if you didn't have sex with her. <laughs> From her, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he did it too, didn't he? He's not. That's why he's laughing. He's like, I really did it. I wasn't going to say it, but yeah, you did. You did. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so... This has been uh, a little challenging inside. I still have the um, the baby. I'm not complaining because uh, she's wonderful, and obviously a lot of other people have it harder. Um, but I've got one baby who doesn't know how to play with other children yet. That's <laughs> been a little challenging. So I'm uh, I'm still really funny as a dad, and that is a <laughs> short window in life where dad is funny. So uh -huh. I'm milking that every minute I can. Uh, while my daughter <laughs> still a hilarious guy because I make faces. Um, she doesn't get Muppet references yet, so I don't even have that. Like, I'm not even leaning on the A material yet, but we'll get there. Um, <clears throat> I heard that, uh, I mean, I, I know that this is true, right? Like, this came out like a week ago that Mexico is not allowing Americans in. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> technically, there is, in, in a manner of speaking, a wall, and Mexico paid for it. But it just points the wrong way. Is that that's the only difference? So Trump was right. It just didn't work out exactly as he thought. All right. Uh, it's been interesting to be inside. I've been working from home. I'm lucky enough to still have a job, and I'm working on my computer nonstop. Uh, I have three rooms. There's a baby asleep in one of them all the time, and then there's a bunch of cats and a wife. Uh, and there's no point at which I actually have any privacy whatsoever. Uh, so there's been uh, there's been a bit of challenge. Uh, right now, I'm just jumping between rooms where people aren't sleeping, uh, and that's it. Uh, at any point, cats bite my ankles, uh, and I have no I have no control over that. <laughs> no HR department to protect you from cat bites. Uh, it's been it's been fun. Um, they're here. The cats are here. <laughs> they heard me talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun it's been fun and you know i don't always go to the 
to bed at the same time my wife does. Well, one of us is working, one of us is trying to sleep. Like you can't use the kitchen if the other person is sleeping and you're working because there's only a bedroom, there's a desk. Um, forget jerking off. There's just not, that's just not. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go in the car. I don't have another choice. <laughs> And I can't do it if the car's not moving either. Like I got it, that just feels weird. <laughs> so I take a lot of Ubers, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been able to get anywhere other than I've been able to do Trader Joe's and that is it. I can't, I can't even stomach the idea of going anywhere else. Uh, and I know it's like, well, maybe you're overreacting Pete. And then I'm always overreacting and I'm always over cautious and over worried. I'm always seeing doom and gloom and then I see news and I'm like, oh shit, I wasn't pessimistic enough. Oh, god damn. <laughs> First time of exactly. my life, I have underestimated <laughs> the bad situation. Um, so no one believes me anymore. That's That's been a challenge. Um, I thought that uh, five years ago, I bet uh, one of my friends that if Trump won the Republican nomination, we might not have a 2020 election. Um, and five years later, now I realize that we might not have a 2020 pretty soon. <laughs> right. Wasn't worried about the election as much as I should have been. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't want to get too much into politics, but I will. Um, <laughs> can't stop me. Uh, it's, uh, it's been really challenging just not to rub it in. Like I still have those Facebook friends that I just try not to fight with for the last four years, but like now it's like, is this is this what you thought you were getting? Is this what you wanted? Are you happy with this? Um, and then the, my rebuttal to anything they say is just to forward a tweet from Trump. That's all I have to do. I don't have to make a good logical <laughs> argument anymore. I have four years of tweets to just throw at people. <laughs> it's been wonderful to uh, just pull the carpet out from under the guys now. I mean, it was kind of a hold. We just let them dig themselves. And, and here they are. Uh, here they are in masks. <laughs> um, I haven't, I don't really know anyone that's gotten it. I know, you know, some people have, who have, I loosely know, lost some parents and, um, uh, but it's for me, like I have not had a lot of people I know get it. And yet I'm still deathly afraid to talk to or be with anyone uh, and for anything longer than eight seconds. I'm still uncomfortable at the 10 foot limit uh, apart at Trader Joe's. And a number of seconds and breaths I have to take. Not that I'm counting the breaths while I'm at the register, but I am. I'm counting the breaths I have to take and mitigating how much risk that is in my head. If I multiply, how many, how many droplets of water can I inhale in one inhalation and then times the number of neuroses I'm developing because of this and then multiply that by the number of drugs I can't get my hands on anymore. <laughs> uh, I'll close with one doctor thing because I like I don't remember it was Bear or Swan, but like when you guys said the gynecologist uses spatulas on you, like I, I don't know if it's terminology that's wrong, but like one of you guys needs a new doctor, sure, the least. <laughs> not a common problem. This is just a unique doctor situation you can get out of. All right, uh, I'm gonna go. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Um, thank you very much. Bachelor. Bachelor. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, nothing personal. Maybe I'm perverted, but it sounds like I would really like to go to a gynecologist. <laughs> they're shoving stuff all in kind of holes. There's lube all over the place. There's stuff in the cup. There's clamps. You know what I mean? There's Holy. money involved. Oh my God. It's like a fucking porno. <laughs> God, why don't you guys go more often? I'm going to start pushing. You know, as president, I'm going to push more door women to go to the gynecologist so they can be happy with their lives. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Clean pussy for you. everybody. That's what I'm talking about. So we got another comedian coming to the stage and she is extra clean on the inside and the outside. She's the double D's in the street and double times the big love in your heart and she's got a red shirt on bringing all that big love to you like a tight love. So are you ready for this next comedian? All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Right. And get it down Man, to the uh... double D's in the Get some. All right, double D's, guys. Um... <laughs> 
you know, the double D's are getting bigger every day. <laughs> They're going to turn into double E's pretty soon. And then the joke's not going to work. <laughs> oh, no, like, no, but like, you know, at my, I'm a chiropractor at my office. I mean, it all started when this one guy, he, you know, my, my initials are DD, you know, Dr. Deanna Dixon. And he called me Dr. Double D. I mean, I was so offended because these are turning into double E's. <laughs> Man, uh, you know, what's, what's, what's sad is my chiropractic patients, they never bring me treats or, you know, any cookies or anything like on the holidays or it sucks. So they didn't, you know, I'm turning 60, I turned 60 and they didn't even bring me anything. That sucks. I mean, then I keep expecting to them. I even send them home with little hints. Like, like here, take some Tylenol and here's this recipe for snickerdoodles. <laughs> I mean, billing you for a hundred dollars per hour is really nice. I mean, I appreciate it, but would it kill you to throw in an extra Kit Kat? <laughs> um, no, it was, it's really been really sad because um, the churches got shut down during this whole quarantine. And even my church sees candy. <laughs> I mean, nothing makes you see God quite like a diabetic coma. <laughs> oh, yeah, it sucks because my husband has diabetes. He's been eating too much chocolate. He can't even feel his feet. That's what he said. And oh, no. uh, he's starting to go. Yeah, no, he's starting to lose his sight. I mean it's it sucks because i gotta make sure everything's off the ground so he doesn't trip on it i mean i can't believe the lengths he'll go through to to get me to pick up after myself <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i mean it's so sad like people are getting sick all around me from the virus and all i can think about is chocolate <laughs> i mean i should try thinking about cake too <laughs> <laughs> oh like I said, I did turn, I turned 60 guys. Woo! Yeah, I know. Woo! Thank you. Woo! <laughs> no, but it sucks. Like, I don't want to be that old. My, my girlfriend, my young girlfriend, she's like, you actually look like a young person trapped in an old lady's body. I'm like, oh my God, you think I'm young? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, but it sucks. Cause uh, I hate, I hate quarantine. I, I mean, I had to celebrate my birthday in quarantine i mean it was it was not much it was it was different than my 59th birthday when my friends didn't have an excuse for coming over to my party <laughs> uh no um uh, i can't think of anything worse than celebrating my birthday in quarantine um uh other than not getting a birthday cake <laughs> oh man yeah I had to make it my own and that was bad. Um, I'm okay with the, some of the health restrictions like being six feet apart, but uh, as long as it's not six feet under. <laughs> that's, uh -huh. no, that's, I don't, yeah. Uh, my husband, he's so romantic. Guys, I mean, he bought me some new panties for my birthday. I was like, Ooh. Ooh. he's so, th thank you. He's so thoughtful. I mean, the panty, the, the thing is like the panties aren't normal panties. Like they're not like cute little thong ones. I mean, they've got the pad in, inside of it. Stitched <laughs> in, like, it's designed to, it's designed to catch pee. <laughs> I mean, some people call them depends, but I just call them romance. I mean, <laughs> The, only, the problem with that is like I should have had them 12 years ago. <laughs> oh, I got I got to keep changing my pants. That's why I have to buy so many pants. <laughs> but not anymore. Not anymore. I got new panties. Um, no, I, I was thinking about losing weight, uh, 60 pounds for my 60th birthday. But I decided to wait and <laughs> because I, I, I want to do all my fat jokes for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> If I turn if I turn skin if I get skinny, I'd have to do a whole new set. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be too much work. <laughs> you know how many how long it takes to write a good joke, right, guys? <laughs> um, no, but I I thought I'd be further along in my life by now. Uh, 
like, <laughs> but my, my goals, everyone has goals, but I take them to the next level. Like you guys want to read a book and I just want to learn how to read. <laughs> you, I know you, you guys, you guys probably maybe gain, did anybody gain weight over quarantine? Raise your hand. <laughs> Uh, I gained the, you guys might've gained 10 pounds. I gained 20. <laughs> mm. I mean, I'm like, I see your 10 and I add another 10. <laughs> uh, you haven't paid taxes for two years. That's amateur. I haven't paid taxes since Nixon was around. <laughs> oh my God. No, I know. That's a long time. The, the IRS is after me big time. That's why I'm hiding out here. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll leave you with this. Like my my husband and I are trying to get along during quarantine. I mean, we get so stressed out though. Like when he stresses out, he cooks. When I stress out, I eat. Mm. We are a match made in heaven. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, I'm telling you, I I thought that uh, I think nail salons should have opened up a long time ago. They should have been essential. Here's why. Because I gained so much weight that I could barely see my toes now. <laughs> Let alone cut them. And my husband, he doesn't even know he has toes. <laughs> yeah, like, so I think nail salons are essential. Thank you. That's my time, Deanna Woo! and Deanna Dixon. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love Deanna. And she's got the best career. Uh, she's a chiropractor, right? And which. Yeah. Reading is not a requirement, so you're you're not being able to read. It, it works out. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to the chiropractor, but I was in an accident with my friend, and we had a real shady Armenian lawyer who hooked it up. Um, so I got like six months of chiropractor for free. Nice. Now, con- nice. Yes. Oh my god, and it's so cool. And they go and they put like a little heating pad on your back, and they like real nice. Yeah. What are you doing, Carl? What game you like? This, that, and the third. And then they heat your back up, and then. This is where it gets filled. It's like prison a little bit because it's like you got a new roommate <laughs> named Rocco, but he's just going to crack your back. So then he just crawls up on you and he's just like, okay, Carl, turn to the side, get in the fetal position. All right. And then he leans over. He like shoves his dick kind of in your butt, but not really. And then, <laughs> crack! And then you're like, ah, ah, ah. oh my God, that feels great. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I have back problems because I'm a basketball star and that should fix my back for three months even after it was over. If you nice. never had one, get a uh-huh. chiropractor. If you're yeah. rich, get one in the basement. It is the shit. Round of applause. Hey, man, hey, hey, for chiropractor. Hey, for that's right. That's right. We got our chiropractor saved my night. back. Yeah, back, you guys do back surgery and I was like, I'll go see a chiropractor. And that's been 25 years ago, so. I'm telling Thanks. you, I'm in for free, guys. For free. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, hey, right afterwards. <laughs> it's the bomb. It's the bomb. Now, if you know any Mexicans, they have another solution, but it comes in like a little bag and it costs a lot of money. Um, so uh, you probably want to get a chiropractor. Uh, yeah. It's legal. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> it's like, oh, my back hurts. Hey, puppy, I got you. I just had two beers. I got some back pain right here, puppy. I'm like, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, okay, give me some. Anyway, uh, so you guys ready for our final comedian to close tonight? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Now this last comedian coming to the stage, he's a gentleman and he's got three names. That's because we had the dive bar and we are elegant, classy, and beautiful. And we always want to get it right. He's the AMM, he sounds like he's Maybach music, but purely American, American Maybach music. And you better get ready, get hyped for that hat that's low and turn to the side like he's Clyde the Glide. And can I get a clap, 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 clap for Ed Michael Mark! Right. Good job. That was exciting. That was like it was my birthday. Thank you very much, man. That's great. Um, dude, I love the fireworks. Like my roommate. He's from Baghdad, so he didn't even notice anything was happening. He's like, oh, it's just like, oh. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I had to tell him. I was like, no, look to the left. And he was just like, yes, yes, yes. Like, he like, <laughs> nothing <laughs> phased yes, him. Yes. I know, and he's like just playing Call of Duty. And I'm like, look, dude, it's like Call of Duty's outside. Go outside. But he wouldn't. <laughs> he wouldn't. I'm actually, I'm excited to see that the Cleveland Indians want to change their name. 
and I hope that they change your name to the Cleveland Redskins. I think that'd be great. <laughs> I would like to see a change there. I'm just going to throw out all these different random ass jokes. Like, I'm, I'm not a fan of Supreme Pizza, mostly because it looks like a pizza that's just topped with, all, with like just other toppings you picked off other pizzas. You know, like it's just, it doesn't make sense to me. It looks like it's just leftover stuff. I, uh, I found out about the play Wicked. I'm really surprised it wasn't based in Boston, to tell you the honest to God truth. It sounds like it's based in Boston. And, like, the whole city of Boston is a weird thing to me because it's, like, this huge city, and it just creates this one personality over and over and over and over again, like, in everybody who ever comes from there. Like, I've never met anybody from Boston that was, like, I don't know, quiet. You know, like, I've just never met these people. Like, when the accent's really specific, it's, like, the most confident deaf person you've ever met your whole life, and you're just like, okay. I got it. Like, even like when I met like a Boston Terrier, you know, I was like, oh, great. Is he racist? You know, like it was just Boston's got a whole thing about it. If we're going to cancel things. We should cancel Boston. I'm um, I'm five foot three. And people ask me, like, is dating hard at your height? And I'll say this. Uh, every wrestler that's my height has to wear a mask when they go to work. So there's that, you know, like there we have that thing going for us. Um, I. I would I miss I miss going regular dates. I, I used to. I went to the planetarium before it all closed down, like, you know, before COVID. And it's great. Like, I can, like, when I went, I could just hear my grandfather's, like, voice, you know, because he was cheap. And he was like, you know, you don't have to pay someone $20 to just look up at the sky. And I was like, ah, oh, shit, he's right. And he's like, you got the sky at home, idiot. And you're like, yeah, yeah, he is right. But, like, this guy who works at the planetarium, he, like, he wanted to, like, blow my mind. And he was just like, you ready to have your mind blown? I was like, yes. And he handed me a moon rock. And he was like, this is the oldest thing you've ever touched. And then I was like, I thought I had a really dumb question. You know, and I was like, hey, uh, is that older than the earth? Because I touch the earth every step of the way here. And then he looked at me <laughs> all mad because apparently we don't know. They're like, that's a thing that we don't know. And he was just like, oh, and I was like, oh, shit. Looks like I'm your boss now. You know, like, so <laughs> like, I should, like, I have to take the rock and like, hey, you want to have your mind blown? You want to touch something that's as old as I don't know everything you've touched ever, <laughs> like any kind of rock. Like all I don't know, all <laughs> rocks I guess are old in my mind, and that might just be ages of me if we're really gonna break it down. I uh, like I said, I am five foot three, and it does confuse people because I do have the confidence of a man who's like five foot five. You know, like it's <laughs> like meeting a smart car who's like just revving his engine at a red light. Like that's pretty much what <laughs> if I was really to break it down, and people are just like. They're kind of like, where does he get that kind of confidence? And I'm just like, well, I do love those Lord of the Rings movies, you know? Like, and if you haven't seen the Lord of the Rings movies, it's because you had sex before I did. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You know, like, but <laughs> but I love those movies because in that place, I'm tall. I'm the Shaquille O'Neal of the Shire. Like, I'm into whatever they're doing. <laughs> like, like, that's a place I could actually play sports. And I, like, love sports, you know? Like, that is, oh, my God, the Shire had basketball. Oof. I, uh, I do have a Cubs hat. I wear it every day. But in the gay neighborhood I live in, I'm just already a Cub. You know, like, I don't need to advertise. It, <laughs> but that's what I do. You know, like, and it's, it is kind of exciting, you know, because they're like, oh, I'm afraid of bears. You know, like, and there's a lot of bears in there. And, like, they chase me down. You know, like, and you're like, part of me, like, the straight side of me is like, I don't want to date the, the dudes. And then, like, the other part of me with the ego is like, yeah, but you want to try to date a 10. You know, like, let's go. Let's try what they have going on over there. I, uh, I did... I, I was driving the other day, like right four in the morning, as you do, and I, <laughs> there's nobody around. And so like I look and so I see a red light and I just drive through the red light. And that's when I see the police officer who clearly watched me drive through this red light. And mm-hmm. he was speeding up because he, yeah, you know, he's just doing his job, speeding up, trying to like pull me over. I get nervous. I hit the brakes. He hits the back of my car. Right. <gasps> I was like, I know as a five foot three man, this is all the power I've ever desired. You know, like I was like, yes, here we go. You know, like I was like, I sat there for a moment and I was like, wait, do I ask him for his license or registration? <laughs> and then like, I looked at my rear view mirror and I could see him and he was like, oh fuck, he's going to ask me for my license or registration. <laughs> right? And I didn't know what to do. So I got out of the car and like, as I'm walking towards his car, I'm like, I guess I just act like a cop now. Like what do cops do? And so, you know, like, so I broke his window and tried to wrestle him to the ground. You know, like, you know do you know why I pulled you over? You know, like, yeah. he's like a really nice white guy. So I just let him off with a warning. You know, like that's, so I was, I was a perfect officer that day. You know, like that's what I was doing. I, 
I do love, I love professional wrestling. I think professional wrestling is great. It's a lot like being a Christian though, you know, like, you know, like uh, <laughs> as soon as anyone finds out and you're into it, they're just like, Hey, you know, it's not real. Right. And you're like, Hey, it's real to me. Like, that's what I need. It's real to <laughs> me. Although I think women's wrestling is more appropriate. And I think it makes more sense because they're just fighting over a belt, you know, like that's all they're really <laughs> doing. <laughs> <laughs> But my favorite thing about the whole wrestling thing is like when I go to these bars, you know, I get to watch everyone drinking and it just reminds me of why I love Stone Cold Steve Austin and hate my stepdad for the exact same behavior. You know, hey, uh, guys, I'm Aaron Michael Marsh. Thank you very much. That's right. Aaron Michael Marsh music and come. <laughs> Fucks with it, you know what I'm saying? Thanks to all the comedians that came through, everybody Woo! that did their thing tonight and whatnot. My man Barry okay. Banjo, Deanna Dixon, Suwan Weaver, Woo! Aaron Michael Marsh, Pete Delisandro, and of course my two host ladies. Um, he's talking about the fireworks, and I live in downtown LA. That's right, three hours of nonstop madness. And of course, I would get drunk and I sang the Star Spangled Banner, right? So we're gonna <laughs> close the show out in an American way. And I'm gonna sing the Star Spangled Banner and then Miss Joe is gonna send us home. So are you guys ready to close it out? Do you feel really American right now? Yeah, man. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> and I got the words here so I don't fuck them up. <laughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight oh, the round. Once we watched was so gallantly streaming <coughs> and the rocket's red glare the bomb bursting in the air gave through to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yeah, way yeah. oh, the land of the green. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, my voice is done. Wow. Yeah. All right, thank you. Wow, Joe, finish it out. Let me find it. Oh, wow. Wow. Comedy show, skip bags, Mr. C. Oh, we got wow. I feel like going to play a game of baseball right now. That was super American. <laughs> Mr. C, shirt cocking it. Wow. That's what that's called. <laughs> Um, wow. Anybody know what time it is? I feel like that was a quick show. It's 10 after tonight. 10. 10 after 10. 10 oh, after well 10. Thank you, girl. Perfect. We're on perfect. I, uh, last week, you know, I, I try to do different sets every time. Like I said, we blew our load last week. I told a story about myself taking photos as a uh, 22 year old uh and getting posted on a natural and hairy website um so it, it was uh a kind of a dirty set and revealing oh, yeah. of kind of a That's funny story lucky. and for some reason my mom decided to watch the show for the first time oh, oh. No. Oh, hey, it always gets dirty when mom gets involved no wonder i didn't do a watch party this week and no wonder i'm not doing a set <laughs> uh, yep you never know who's watching yeah she did and she watched the whole thing i i went up last I went up last. She watched the whole 
thing. Oh no. Um, so mm -hmm. she learned all the dirty details of me fingering my butthole for seventy dollars. <laughs> which I didn't get. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I'll have to write some nice clean jokes for next week. But uh, I want to thank all our comics that were here this week. It was so much fun. I love having you all and seeing your thank faces. Thank you so I much, can't wait Joe. to see you in real life one of these days. And in the meantime, I love our virtual bar scene. So uh, let's go around uh, and just give your social media where people can find you on my online. Let's start with you, Carol. I know you have your every Sunday show. Where can people yep. find you? Uh, speaking of which. It's uh, Aaron Michael Marsh will be with me on Sunday night. Um, oh, yeah. the world's yeah. best laugh, Sunday at 7 30 on Facebook Live. So come and like the world's best laugh page so you can get the notification as soon as it goes live. And um, otherwise, you can find me on Instagram at Button Art by Carol. And you can find me on Facebook at Carol Newell or the world's best laugh. Thanks for having Great. me. Awesome. Mm -hmm. How about you, Suan? Where can people find you online? Um, at Suwon Weaver, S-U-W-O-N Weaver, W-E-A-V-E-R. We've got a great show coming up at Flappers Hot Medusa, and Carol is on that lineup. It's Woo! July 23rd. Yeah, we have Woo! all the right. super diverse things. Yeah, go on by. Awesome. Okay, Pete, where are you online? You can find me on Twitter, mostly. Uh, I'm at Pete of all trades. I'm not on Facebook very often anymore. I was, I keep getting flagged for being too accurate. So I'm sticking to Twitter <laughs> and, uh, at Pete of all trades. Cool. Cool. All right. Deanna Dixon. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Instagram, Deanna Dixon comic. That's D E A N N A. And then D I C K S O N. Yeah. Make, at, make sure you spell it right. D I C K. Yeah, not, <laughs> not the other way. <laughs> not excellent. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. All right. How about you, Aaron? Where can people find you? I'm on all the social medias at Aaron M. Marsh. You know, like find me on Venmo first and then Instagram and then, you know, maybe Twitter. <laughs> and then I have a podcast, Putting Up With Aaron Michael Marsh. You can find me anywhere you find podcasts. Well, what's your podcast? It's called Putting Up With Aaron Michael Marsh. Uh -huh. I just have guests what's coming it about? In. What is it? It's an interview show. I had like green shirt guy who's like a political dude on last week. And uh, I'm trying to remember who I have coming up this week. I have Kane Holloway coming out tomorrow. Cool. So just a comment. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Well, if you need a hot huh. political week, you can always interview Carl Anthony for president. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All, thank all you. Of us, Any all question of us on the fly. Too, I'm like, so you can go ahead and interview South us. Park. Any question on the fly. And I'll yeah. be sober. So I'll be nice. <laughs> I've never all right, seen Mr. Steve, where can people find you? Oh, well, Mr. C Enforcer, Poppy Carlo on the Instagrams, Mr. C Force on the Twitters and whatnot, uh, Google Skitbags Entertainment, Google Skitbags Radio when we back in those Teslas on Dash Radio when it's back out. Um, also, check out Office Uprising, check out the Scramble movie. Right now, we got a movie called The Deported that's out right now. It's on iTunes, so Google anything on iTunes. Check out stuff by LA Reels, which are my guys that taught us how to film in LA. And always and forever bring your ass back to the motherfucking dive bar comedy show and Amen. keep that shit in your heart and mm -hmm. soul. I love all you guys. Thank y'all for doing our show and everybody have a great night. Thank all you. right. Thank we are you. on live every Tuesday night at Dive Bar Comedy on Facebook. You can find us at Dive Bar Comedy anywhere you want. You can find me at Wild Joe, Wild Joe Comedy, wherever. And uh, we are going to be reposting this the day after. So it'll be up for the replay. Wherever you listen to podcasts on iTunes, Android, SoundCloud, YouTube, wherever you want, just search for us at Dive Bar Comedy. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Right. And I hope to see you all next week. Thank okay. you, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you guys. Thank you. I don't want you to pass on. We saw that. <laughs> Good night, Facebook.